Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of 5 Minute Gaming News, this show that may or may not be five minutes. Today in the news, what's it going to take, Sony? I have said for some time now that the Game Pass system Xbox has is the best deal in gaming, because it is. Day one launches, big titles, fun indies, and lots of choice for a relatively low price. Meanwhile, Sony, well, <laughs> Sony lost nearly 2 million subscribers since the June 2022 relaunch of its own Game Pass-like system, PlayStation Plus. Now, there could be many factors at play here, but from my perspective, they're all bad. Perhaps it was the three tiers of content. As Kotaku says, it's understandable that all the promotional noise made in June would have served to simply remind a lot of people about the money coming out of their account each month. Given they would then have to fathom which version of the new service they wanted, it makes sense that those who not used it in a long while would have instead just canceled. And then, with the different costs and different rewards, but none being anything too alluring, I get why people people left too. Like, retro games are cool, but day one access to new releases is cooler. And yeah, I know there's gonna be a comment that's like, but Jesse, the YouTube audience for retro gaming is huge, and people buy retro games all the time. But here's the thing. They buy them to collect them. They watch retro videos to reminisce. But the actual audience playing retro games is very small. And Sony's determination not to include first-party titles, but rather charge a defiant $70 for them, could well put off many who see Game Pass going in entirely the opposite direction. And this resistance to being just more consumer-friendly is hurting them. PlayStation Plus dropped to 47 million users last year, and now is down another 1.9 million since summer. But as Video Game Chronicle says, Sony's gaming division is making more money per subscriber than it was before, potentially reflecting the uptake of the more expensive subscription tiers introduced by PlayStation Plus. So it's still a huge number, even bigger than Game Pass numbers. And it's very clear they're making money, but no business, no matter who they are, wants to see those numbers decline. And in the long term, with this Microsoft Activision Blizzard thing, it's kind of worrying for Sony. Especially when Game Pass keeps nailing what people are into. Like right now, in November, Vampire Survivors is coming out. That is a huge game in the PC world right now, and now it's going to be huge in the console world. At least that's what Xbox is hoping, and they're taking a bet. And it's weird that Sony just isn't on that train. In other news, Kojima reveals the next cast member of his upcoming project. Recently, we have been getting more and more news on Kojima's next project, Overdose, as it is injected straight into our veins with cast reveals showing his next game will bring in favorites from previous titles like Margaret Qualley, as well as bringing in new actors like Elle Fanning. Well, now we can add Shiori Katsuna to the list, best known by nerds for... Bye, Ray. Bye, Ukiyo. So I'm sure right now, many of you are probably saying, Jesse, what the hell is this game? And I'm gonna let you know, I have no clue. I don't think we're gonna know till we're sitting down playing it. Because if you remember Death Stranding, they released half a dozen trailers and I was still like, what is this game? Remember, Kojima's out there literally saying he's going to change the medium of gaming. I don't know what he's up to, but I am here for that insanity. Speaking of insanity, Sega's long lost erotic thriller FMV game has been found. All the way back in 1997, Sega was set to release a game called The Sacred Pools, but ultimately they canceled the project after it was met with some pretty negative reception at E3 1996. The internet doth provide, however, as Gaming Alexandria, sort of a library of game preservation, found and shared a downloadable version of the prototype. The story on Video Game Chronicles seems to be that, for years, rumors swirled of the game's existence. Existence, but no one had any other information on it after the terrible press it got at E3. That was until a game collector informed Gaming Alexandria in May that David Gray, an associate producer on The Sacred Pools, still owned the discs. From there, they managed to rip the files and now you can play them on an emulator. And that's pretty impressive game preservation right there. I'm blown away by this whole thing, mostly because this was from a time where games like Night Trap existed, so how did this one not get made? An erotic Sega thriller? I'm... I have to, I have to play this. I have to play this game. It has Jesse written all over it. It's everything I love about games. This is... this is one of my two do's. It's on a list right now. Speaking of things I love... Hey! 
I would love it if you would go, that was a segue, all right. I would love it if you would go over to youtube.com slash coxclips and give it, a, give it a shot. I got VODs, I got the shorts, I got all sorts of stuff over there. Things I'm sure you would love. Games, if you're like, Jesse, where are the Let's Plays? They're over there now, man. Go check them out. Anyway, that's it for me. Thanks so much. I'll see y'all tomorrow for another episode of 5-Minute Gaming News.